tee up and hopefully have a, a quick little discussion on, on really what is the top line of the report of, of the early work that we're doing here, looking at, um, at American progress. And I think what's really interesting as we kind of get into this, this is maybe the first installment. I think as we, we talk about it, we're gonna do a deeper dive into some of it, but I'm gonna share with you just a little bit of the top line. And I'm gonna start by um, talking just a little bit about sort of what the model is. So we talked to uh, 2000 Americans. We started in the US uh, for the first wave of this study. And uh, we talked to these folks um, in mid-April, between April 9th and April 14th. And we essentially asked them a series of questions. So behind each of these topics are a series of detailed questions uh, that form a composite for uh, the data that I'm gonna talk about. So we asked them about their personal progress. So the way to kind of think about this model is there's lots of things about me, uh, which are in the orange, and then how I feel about my future, how I feel about my identity, my health, my happiness, et cetera. And then there's the world around me, which is below on the green. So sort of maybe a little bit more about things that you feel like you could somewhat control in the orange versus the other things that are sort of around you. Uh, and behind that uh, is really where you start to get into the interesting tensions between what do uh, Americans feel is working for them personally and what are the obstacles and also catalysts to the, their progress in their lives. So I'm not gonna go into all this, but um, I'm gonna kind of talk about it as we go into the data, but you'll be able to kind of see, as I said, the descriptors around these handles. So identity is about your esteem and your acceptance, feeling included in society, I have a range of questions there. Personal health, happiness, your stated happiness, your levels of stress and anxiety, your purpose in work, uh, Lots of questions around your personal finances, your hope and optimism for the future, and then those macro issues around you, talking about uh, your access to affordable education and healthcare, understanding uh, the economic situation around you as well as your environment, and then critically looking at social equity uh, and institutions and their opinions uh, about those. So we're going to start and talk just a little bit about kind of what we see, and, and David and Josh, please. Uh, jump in. Um, what this is, is a scalar of, of one to 100. Um, we've simplified it into sort of a five point scalar to kind of look at the data vis-a-vis -vis the internal personal progress indicators. And you can really kind of see a couple of things. I mean, one is um, sort of across the board, you're going to see stronger scores for people's personal progress than you are about the world around them. So we sort of average somewhere around about a 3.5 uh, what was notable there was really strong reporting of personal health. We do believe some of that is related to the questions we asked, which was focused a lot uh, about um, optimism for their health and, and no doubt sort of hopefully coming out of COVID uh, in the US, there seems to be a, a sense of sort of perhaps relief or a sense of sort of confidence uh, as they think about their health moving forward and high degree of, of, of sensitivity towards their health. The other thing on happiness, we saw across our Harris data, as I've shared with you, national reappraisal around happiness and sort of putting life in perspective, a reawakening of relationships, a reawakening of goals um, and, and not letting time just pass by. So that, that didn't surprise us at all. Um, but we did sort of see, you know, um, sort of most sort of declining scores, <clears throat> excuse me, on the identity at the beginning among the general public and also really on hope and optimism for the future. And then as you start to get into the data, you can see um, that in, in some respects, there is a, a far degree of low scores across different audiences, including young Americans, uh, Gen Z, for instance, uh, which scored very low, especially on personal finances and on a sense of identity. No doubt there's been tremendously difficult dislocation for young people uh, dealing with finding their way uh, into life, given everything that's sort of going on, you know, young people in careers, young people dealing with education. We also saw lower scores across the board for Hispanic Americans, as well as Americans making uh, less than $50,000 a year household income. And a couple of the notable things sort of in there, I think, are really the K-shaped recovery. If you look at the bottom of the screen under personal finances, look at that five to one ratio on sense of whether your finances are in critical condition, which is under 50K at one, 
versus excellent condition, which is your 150K plus uh, household and similar scores for happiness and hope and optimism and how those radiate outward. So that's a quick look at the personal level. David or Josh, anything before I kind of look at the external? No, it's just amazing how inequality just jumps out of, it, uh, of this data. I think we should look at the, compare it to the community stuff though and, and see the theme continue, I think. Let's do that because we certainly see that. So far score, um, lower scores across the board with the general public on the institutions around them, right? Education to healthcare, to the economy, David, as you just said, look at a, a score of a two, right? So personal finances and a, a poor sense of the economy uh, is really sort of halting people's sort of perceived progress. Um, also the environment. Right, uh, climate change has come back to the fore now that COVID has started receding a little bit of mind space uh, in our opinion polls with Americans in the Harris poll. But look at institutions, all right? And this really tracks with a lot of the uh, other data that the economy and Harris poll has shared uh, with the audience this year that just massive distrust uh, and sort of disbelief in, in, the, in the functioning and operations of, of, of our nation's institutions. And you know that sort of cuts across populations, with the exception of millennials. You know, you see far, far sort of really poor scores among um, among those for for institutions. One wonders if millennials that are coming into their prime, the older group of millennials are turning forty, if they're more reliant on institutions uh, at this stage in their career. Could that be behind this? Not sure. But again, you know, look at the consistency on institutional disrespect across. Um, demography. Um, and the only difference there is, again, if, you, if you're wealthier, you tend to be more supportive of institutions, uh, as well as the economy and healthcare uh, and education. Um, so, you know, John, other, in general, what we're seeing here is people are much more comfortable with their personal situation than they are with the society in which they live. Is that a good summary? Yeah, David, and I think that trends to a lot of, of various ways that oftentimes when we talk to people, you, know, you tend to be more personally optimistic than you are about the prospects of, of, of the country as a whole. So when you ask those types of questions in, uh, in Harris, I think what's really interesting is just how different um, the, the kind of deltas are in this instance, that there's just lots of lots of cynicism in the world around you. So there tends to be a little bit more of a, a me versus sort of a we mentality as you start to kind of see how this uh, this data plays out. I'd also tell you, as you go through this, um, we noticed that uh, Asian Americans tend to act a lot like white Americans. And, and uh, as we cut the data from a demographic standpoint, they tended to have uh, sort of similar attitudes. Um, and you're gonna see uh, lots of differences between older white males and younger people, uh, Gen Z Americans and BIPOC people of color on a lot of these issues. And let's go a little bit deeper. Um, this uh, semi-wonky chart, apologies, um, is helping us understand which factors of, of what we just discussed are the most important um, in driving um, the dependent variables. We have two variables that we set up. We set up a, um, are you secure with your standing in society? And are you satisfied with societal progress? And so the two that had the greatest explanatory power uh, in these, and these are correlations, they're not causations, but we can, we can safely say from a correlation standpoint, the, uh, the sense of, of one's personal identity and the institutions are the two most important factors followed by social equity. They explain the largest degree of that sense of standing in society and that sense of satisfaction that society is moving forward. So what you have there is a stronger identity uh, than institutions. We just talked about how poorly performing uh, institutions are. So there tends to be, as you look at these numbers across the board, uh, men, especially women at, at 21 versus the average at 19.6, this sense that I've got to make it alone, right? It's going to be me. There aren't the social safety nets there. There aren't functional institutions uh, that are looking out for uh, for me, the average American. A couple of other things I think are noted. I, I put a couple black dots next to some things that I thought were interesting. If you look under women, you can see sort of the she session, uh, as has been reported widely, 
kind of manifest itself a little bit here in the data. Again, we see sort of lower levels of sense of sort of uh, a belief in personal finances in terms of confidence and perhaps how that's related to um, other attitudes around education uh, and optimism in general. So there has been sort of a, a dislocation uh, of, of women during the, um, during the pandemic that has been systemic and has, has really hit uh, women of color and, and women of across demography in, in a pretty substantial way. And John, because there was a question from the audience about the sort of the, the gender differences in the last slide as well, I think we saw that, that women generally across the board uh, scored progress lower than men um, on, on this slide here. Um, so is that sim similarly representative of, of that next chart? Yeah, that's correct. If you just look at the top here, you can kind of see women scoring uh, poorly uh, versus men, especially on the economy, 2.5 to 1 in the environment uh, and 2 to 1 on institutions. Exactly. Um, a couple of other things, guys, um, and then we'll open up for a conversation is we then also looked at age. And so when you start to, to go in there, there's a couple of other pieces of the puzzle that start to kind of tell some interesting stories. Again, on institutions, um, Gen Z are sort of perhaps more optimistic that they can change institutions. And obviously we've seen how important Gen Z has been um, in sort of the protests uh, in support of the Black Lives Matter movement uh, over the course of last summer. Um, and also in social equity, look at how they, they pop versus general population 15 to sort of 9.9. .9. Um, millennials, the environment is more important to them as is healthcare. Those popped out to me a little bit um, as did um, against boomers, just this overarching sense of sort of traditionalism, right? Um, their identity is still strong. They have higher than average respect for institutions, which we've seen in, in a lot of our other data. Um, interestingly, social equity. And this is going to beg further research, but my hypothesis on this is that there's been a boomerang in a lot of our Harris Poll data over the last several months about cancel culture. And when we talk to Americans, I'm looking at this question in front of me, do you think there's a growing cancel culture that's a threat to your freedom or not? 64% of Americans believe that, including 82% of white males. So one question there is, that, is there social equity that's sort of becoming a, a topic in a, in a different context as sort of uh, older people uh, sort of see uh, the social uh, equity movement uh, in the country? Um, a couple of other things just on income and education. Um, we see a couple of uh, things that are kind of kind of interesting here. Um, again, under 50K, you just see how um, incredibly important um, this focus is on, on identity, um, needing to sort of really shore oneself up. Um, and I think that's sort of an interesting thing to kind of look at it at here as well. Um, the other thing, you know, as you kind of look at these numbers, is you kind of get into a sense of the fact that, that the economy is um, working better for people that are making more uh, than 150K. Their happiness is higher, as we kind of saw on that earlier chart. Um, but again, if you're making under 50K, if you don't have a college degree, you're more self-reliant. You're not believing that these institutions necessarily are here to focus on you. And this just may be your, self, your safety net. Uh, we've tended to see in a lot of the data, people focusing on their communities, on their families, on themselves, uh, and sort of moving away from institutions, as I'll show you in just a second. And I, well, why don't we do that? This is the last uh, kind of chart maybe I'll, I'll share. And then if we want to go deeper, we certainly can, guys. But um, uh, basically, this is a, a perceptual map. So what we did is we took all of the, the different audiences, as you can kind of see in, in the black, and then we put up the, the different personal indicators and the different external indicators. And we just mapped them for relevance. So this is sort of a quantitative um, perceptual map, a Euclidean distance map that basically looks at the relationship between uh, people's um, sense of seeing um, these as relevant to them or not. And so I think a couple of things kind of pop out. Uh, the first thing you kind of see over on the right in the green is that black Americans, Hispanic Americans, 
uh, millennials and, and sort of uh, white folks under 40 really see institutions as, as more integral, which is kind of interesting. Um, you know, they are tend to be more focused around perhaps maybe affecting change, uh, driving for sort of social equity. So this, again, in a lot of our other data guys, we've seen BIPOC and Gen Z and millennials acting in lockstep on a lot of social issues. So that's kind of not surprising. But then if you look at sort of older black Americans, um, uh, Hispanics, uh, those without college degree, they start to move a little bit in a different way. And those under 50K, um, as you kind of go to the top left, that's sort of a little different subset, but they tend to be more self-reliant, very focused on their identity um, and sort of more self-determinant, perhaps we might say, um, and more maybe more focused on communities making their own ways in, in, in life and kind of sandwiched between them are, are that group, as I said, Gen Z, uh, Black, Hispanic females, Black Americans, Hispanic Americans uh, that have a tend to a sense of more optimism. So they're moving perhaps a little bit more toward wanting to take on the system and challenge institutions. Um, and then, you know, a couple of other quick things that kind of pop out. I mean, the general population definitely sees um, sort of social equity, uh, healthcare, personal financial situation is really determining uh, their sense of security and their sense of social progress. Um, again, as I mentioned earlier, Asian men, uh, AAPI uh, men in our survey and, and white uh, males or males general public, white males together with education tend to kind of all be in the same cluster and they're focused on social equity. And then you see how much more important personal health and health care and finances are uh, to women sort of based on, on the discussion that we just had. So guys, I can drill down deeper. We can go into more of the ratings. What we have kind of behind it are the start of a of a few other uh, points, but I thought that might be a, a good little platform maybe to sort of tee up some of the discussion for so some of the other great- That's speakers. a great, um, it's a deep a deep data dive and there's a lot more where this came from and, and this will be an ongoing research project, which is important to underscore. Um, they, the, I know there's a lot of data on the influence and impact of technology that we're also gathering, which we'll be sharing with this group and, and our wider community in coming weeks and months. Um, the one thing that jumps out at me and we do have to kind of wrap is for all of the income inequality issues and the, the genuine divisiveness of American culture around economic opportunity, it, it surprises me even for all of the, the dis differentiation in between rich and poor, the, the less affluent people still are relatively upbeat about their situation in every respect except they don't think they have enough money I, in, I think it's impressive what they're able to keep together based on this data yeah we've been tracking and doing some other interesting uh research for for some clients and some authors and they're charting sort of a similar pattern uh which is this sense of a renewal of sort of a of american whatever you want to call it it may not there may be a lot of referendums on a democracy and and political divide, but there's that sense of that American spirit and that entrepreneurialism uh, that is something that, that seems to be alive across Americans at different ages. And that cuts across. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, John, thank you so much. Josh, unless you had something to jump in, we really, we need to get to, to the yeah, next no, and, and we appreciate, we know this data is is, is fresh. So what we'll be doing is, is taking it, working with you, John, to package it up into sort of digestible pieces for our community and uh, be sending it to, to, as David mentioned, this group as well as our broader community. So really uh, appreciate the partnership. Thanks guys. I'm originally from Cleveland. Really excited. You've got such a great, uh, <laughs> a great lineup coming up. Great. Thanks guys. Thanks, Thanks John.